All right, guys. Everybody asks me about the loop knot. And I always, I've shown it a thousand times. It's kind of hilarious. But we're going to do another loop knot just so you can see it. We're going to go real slow. Now, this is the Bubblegum Pink 32nd ounce jig. Hot, hot, hot. Check it out. I love the color of it. Looks like bubblegum. If you grew up in the 70s and 80s, that's what bubblegum looked like. Through the eyelet. Okay? You're going to grab it right here. All you're going to do is turn it around about four or five times. Then you're going to pick up the jig. There's the jig. I'm, the hole that I created by holding that loop, holding it, I'm going right back through it. Dragging the jig through it. There's the gob. We all talk about the gob of stuff. This is where you decide where that loop knot's going to occur. And that's it. And that's a really good one, actually. I haven't done a good one for a while on, on the camera. And where are my scissors? There are my scissors. All right. That's another thing. I was in a, I was in a uh, guide trip boat today. We went to Wren Lake and fished. And um, the one thing I can tell you that if you fish with braid, you want to have about, I don't know, four or five of these on your boat. You want them sprinkled around everywhere so you can always find them. They're only about $2.50 on my website. So if you want some, you can buy them there. Otherwise, get some braid scissors. They're not just regular scissors. They're braid scissors. They're meant to cut braid fabric so that they cut through it. And that's a loop knot. And the reason why you do that is because you want your bait to swim horizontal. That's the whole reason. It makes it more natural. Now, does it make a difference? Eh, I don't know. But... I can tell you that it makes me feel a lot better knowing that that jig is freely swimming around doing its thing naturally opposed to being tied to a certain position so i don't know there you go 